everybody. May Flom here. Welcome to this week's live broadcast. We are talking scrapbooking and we're getting right to it. We're back on my desk. It's not a rainy day. Hooray for that. We get to be here at the desk, at the regular desk. And if you're new here, welcome. If you're watching the replay or catching this live, welcome, welcome everybody. So this series, about once a week, and I will be scheduling these. You will find these on my YouTube. I'm going to be scheduling them for about once a week, and I'm actually upgrading some different things, some different features. So we'll play around with that, see how that goes. And what I'm going to be doing, though, is crafting live about once a week. And a lot of it, sometimes we'll be scrapbooking, sometimes we'll be doing other stuff. I've got some holiday, quick and easy holiday ideas, sessions coming up, things like that. So stay tuned. And if you miss the live, it will be available on replay. This week, we are talking using your stash. And what I mean by that is, what do you already own? If you've watched my studio talk videos, then you know... I have a lot of fabric and I need to use that fabric and that's not going so well, but that's okay. So using your stash can look a lot of different ways. For example, I made a card with this paper and let me see, how would this have been? This would have been up here and I only used one tiny piece of it. Now I don't keep scraps and before you say, oh my gosh, what do you mean? You don't keep scraps. I don't store scraps and what I mean by that is this chunk, which is what like uh, eight inches. So this is eight inches. This chunk of paper would just go back. It's eight by 12. It's big enough. Put it back. This would either be die cut, turned immediately into a card or somehow otherwise used. I don't store scraps. And the reason for that, I've got a couple reasons. Reason number one, things don't tend to actually get used. And I'm going to go ahead and start designing while we talk. So I'm gonna be making a 12 by 12 scrapbook page with four by six photos. There I am on vacation. Remember vacations? There I am on vacation. So I'm gonna be scrapbooking a 12 by 12 scrapbook page. Not sure what design we're going with yet, but I'm gonna talk about using your stash while I start to design. If you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. Uh, we are going with the Leapers Fork Whiskey. Oh, Smoky. You know, Smokey has been super quiet, but of course, he's gotta start talking the minute, and I do mean the minute I start filming. That's just always the way. All right, so we're gonna be going with four by six photos, and I'm gonna play around with a couple different ideas here while I talk to you about using your stash. So using your stash can look a lot of different, it can look, it can look different. It depends on, and I may just do two. Now, so I'm looking through all these photos and what I'm noticing is like, that is that. So I'm not sure why I printed this photo too. I don't think I need that photo. This is the same as that. This is a nice photo of Jason, but I don't know that it needs to be here. This is a different location. So do I want to have, and that's out on the front porch and not really necessary. So do I want to have three pictures? I think I want two. Two tells the story and sometimes, sometimes, the story gets told in fewer, it, with fewer photos or in less time or less space than you might actually think possible. So remember that. Ask yourself when you're looking through your photos, uh, do I actually need all of these photos to tell my story? Or do I just think I want to use all of these photos to tell my story? And in fact, one or two photos would have been sufficient. I did not need 12. That is something we all have to ask if we are scrapbookers or crafters in general, because the same thing goes for you're making a card and you're adding stamps. The same thing goes for you're making jewelry and you're adding beads, you're sewing and you're thinking about adding embellishments and details. Do you actually need all of the stuff that you think you do? Sometimes the answer is no. All right, so as far as using up your stash goes, it's actually pretty simple. One of the things you can do, you can do a no spend, meaning you're not allowed to shop until you make so many projects or use so many items in your stash. 
And I've done the no spend. The no spend can be good. Eh, I mean, it's fine. I've done it. I think that there are, there's definitely merit to it. It just depends on if you'll stick to it and if it helps you actually create or not. If you're doing a no spend, but you're not actually creating, well, that's not really helpful, is it? No. So you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. The first question being, what is stopping you from using the supplies on hand? Sometimes it's just that you don't remember you have something. Sometimes it's, well, uh, yeah, I just, I just straight up forgot. That's right. I do have this or that, and I could use these items. I just forgot all about them and didn't use them. And that's that nothing, you know, nothing too complicated. So there are definitely times when you just don't have an item in mind or you don't, you haven't thought about something in whatever way. And so it didn't get used. There's a lot of times where there's not really anything to it other than figuring out, well, what can I do that will make me remember this item or remember make me remember to use this? Now, that can really look a lot of different ways. That can look like having a basket or a container of some kind that you keep items in that you want to use. That can look like keeping notes on items that you have. It can look like keeping a more visual stash. In other words, keeping your supplies more out, more at hand. There's a lot of options when it comes to, I want to, um, you know, I want to use my stash. I want to use these items, but I don't know how or but, you know, whatever the but is to that question to that answer, whatever that is. There's a lot of different ways that you can answer that. And there's not a wrong there. But what you will find is there is going to be a lot of things that help. And it's going to be different for everyone. So here's a few examples for me. I mentioned with the scraps that I don't allow scraps that scraps, you know, if, if you're a scrap of something, you're gonna get used. We're gonna get you used up and on your way. I'm not going to just sit here with a box of scraps to dig through because for me, I happen to know that if you give me a box of scraps, it's just gonna sit there and be a box of scraps and nothing's ever gonna get made from that. Nothing's ever gonna happen. Well, that's not using my stash, that's not productive, that's just a bunch of supplies sitting around on my desk. That doesn't help me, that doesn't help anybody. So what will get you to remember or what will get you to actually use it? The most effective thing that I have found is to have just a couple of items that are current musts. And I really do mean just a couple, just a couple items that are current musts that I really want to use. And when I say a couple, no more than six, six would be absolute the maximum. These are items I want to use. These are items that I want to get put into a scrapbook, get those items, have them where I'm working. Now, for example, um, let me think about it. Today's Friday, so on Tuesday, Tuesday is the day that I made the card with this paper. And when I finished that card, I took those pieces of paper and I set them aside and I said, this is a really cool paper and I really love it which means I want to get it in my scrapbook so that it lasts. You know, I don't just want to put it on cards and then it all disappears and I don't have anything with that paper on it. So I want to get this paper used. I want to do something with this paper, which is great, totally great. But me just saying I want to do something with this paper is not going to get anything done, right? So I put it on my desk knowing that we had this live stream coming and we were talking about using our stash and I'm scrapbooking and those details tell me everything I need to know as far as, okay, well, I can get this used. I can get this used right here on this day at this time, we're going to be scrapbooking and I will feature, I will figure out photos that will work with this particular 
paper. I will figure out what will work right here with this paper. And that is what I will feature. That is what I will use. And that's how I went about making sure that what we're doing right here, using up this piece of paper. And you might think, well, whoop de doo you know, that's a single piece of paper. Well, yeah, but here's the thing. That's how using up your stash starts. You have to actually start using. So no, it might not sound incredibly glamorous to say, well, I'm using up, you know, a single piece of paper. Let me have a parade for myself here. Well, yeah, okay, I get it. That doesn't sound super exciting. However, that's how we're actually going to use up our stash is by starting with that single piece of paper, by pulling out the used alphabet sheet versus the new one. These are the ways in which you can actually get stuff used is not overwhelming yourself. And, you know, I was, I jokingly on over on Instagram and I think on Facebook stories too, this week I had posted and it was a joke, but it was also serious. Like, all right, so who else does this? I'm overwhelmed, have too many projects going. So I'm starting some new projects. Like that's so classically me. That's something that I do. It's, I'm not saying it's something I recommend. I'm just saying it's something I do. And you know, all right, so that's maybe not the best habit. I got it, but it's happening. And I can make some decisions for myself here. Like, do I want, do I want to keep allowing that? Do I want to fight against that? Do I care? Do I care is a pretty important one. And in my case, what I've kind of come to is really just, you know what? I just want more stuff done. So we're just going to look around, pick it, literally whatever get seen first. That's the project we're taking on when we have project time and we're just going to make and do, and it'll start to add up and it'll feel good. And then guess what? Before you know it, we'll have more things completed and less things sitting in the to-do pile and we'll get to start a whole new, new projects to start. You know, we can start all the way over. So I'm going to reach behind me here. So behind me, I have a big thing of drawers and in this thing of drawers are lots of different things and to be perfectly blunt lots of things that need to be organized or reorganized fixed up um none of these are really applicable none of these work i was hoping some of them would desert no okay so I have a bunch of things behind me, a bunch of drawers that have all kinds of different, some of the shelves, like one of the shelves has embellishments. Well, these obviously don't work. Um, and that is put, I actually have this piece of acetate with it because they match and I've been keeping these together, hoping to use them both up. But there's also, let's see, journaling cards bits and pieces, tags. I'm just kind of digging around down here because I was hoping to find some things because that would do double duty. We would get some stuff used. And I'm pulling out a big old stack. We're just gonna pull, pull out a big old stack. So see, this is one of my problems as far as using my stash. I have all of these little card, journaling cards and tags and this is very old. This, yeah, that one's extremely old. But I have all of these things and I have them organized in the sense that like all the like kind of vintagey ones or travel ones are together. And I don't know, they're, they're all the, all the holiday ones are together. But what's not really working is how am I taking this from, I have this stuff, I'd like to use it. How am I taking that into, I've got stuff and I'm using it? How am I actually getting those supplies used? And the answer on this stuff is that I have not been using it. I just, it's too much effort or, ooh, I like, I don't like the hot air balloon, but look, that's exactly what I want. So see, I can cover up the hot air balloon. Boom, there we go, perfect. So the answer is I haven't really been using it. I haven't been using a lot of tags and journaling papers in my scrapbooks or anywhere because it just feels like too much effort 
to go and find it and figure it all out. Like, it's just a lot of fuss. And I'm just not into a lot of fuss. That's just not, no, thank you. I want it simple. I want it easy. I want it simple. I don't want it to be hard. So I need, that's something I need to fix. And update on our use up the paper. This is all that's left. And that's no problem because I get it used right there. All right, so I used every last scrap of that piece of paper and by just going around and doing my thing. That's a good thing. Now I think I want, um, I always have options, of course. But I'm kind of thinking, well, I'll be honest, I'm kind of thinking ribbon, but I'm also thinking ribbon would be a pain in my behind and I don't want to do it. So I was looking at like, what this is a fabric washi tape, like, can I use? And the answer is no, it's not quite right. It's gotta be a ribbon, darn it. Okay. So then I have to look and see, well, what ribbon color do I have that works? Digging around, I'm trying not to use that mustard color that I used last week. Cause, oh my gosh, do I love that stuff. But let's try to use something different. Maybe, maybe red. Red? If I had dark blue, see the thing with the dark blue is that's the background. So I don't really wanna double down on that. And I have my ribbon all in drawers by color mostly. Um, oh, I could do, I could do dark blue that's even darker than everything else. We can do that. Okay, we'll do that. Oh, or, or I also have velvet ribbon. Interesting. Ooh, I kind of like this green, this kind of like mossy green. And I think the lighter one versus the darker one. Let's see. Let's take a look. So I'm kind of thinking that, oh yeah, I like that. Okay. All right. Decision made. Decision made. Excellent. Love it. So that's a great thing too. So like my ribbons, those get used like crazy here in my stash of ribbons because I have them organized by color and I pull things out as I think of them which just gets really, I mean, it's just really super effective because I think of something and I say, oh, I could do this. And then boom, there we go. Because, and by the way, rolling adhesive on ribbon is not easy. It's probably not the best method. It's just, I wasn't really thinking about it and I was just going for it, but I didn't want to deal with liquid adhesive and I didn't want to deal with waiting because we're live. We're live, so let's keep talking and not sit around waiting for adhesive to dry. Okay, so I can see a tiny spot where my adhesive shows. Honestly, just kind of, let's see. I have a craft knife, a craft knife will work. So you can just kind of like, either you can get your craft knife and kind of like bend, like push it so that it's, you just want to be really careful so you're not actually harming your paper, but you can kind of get it and push it under if there's a spot that's showing and then it'll stick to the ribbon and you're good to go. Or you could try to slice, but that's higher risk and I'm not feeling very high risk today. I'm feeling low risk, high reward. How about that? Okay. Then I've got my stapler here. Again, using up that stash. So the stapler sits with the other tools. So and the stapler is just gonna add a little bit of texture, but it's also adding stability, keeping that on there. So keeping my stapler with my tools, which is right within arm's reach of where I sit here and create, that's ensuring that the stapler gets used. Now I don't always keep it here. I don't always keep it out because sometimes I might wanna do something or I might want a different tool that I'm trying to push or trying to get used. And then in that case, the stapler spot might go to somebody else and the stapler might go across the room and sit with where all, I've got all the 
distress inks or the sprays or whatever. It might go across the room and be over there for a while. Here's an old stamp. My, I prefer wood stamps. I wish more companies still made these. I prefer them because what ends up happening with, and I'm gonna just do a couple different colors here. What ends up happening with my wood stamps is they sit up on a shelf across the room and I can just visually scan them at any time. Versus if you are an unmounted stamp, well then, you know, you're up in your little spot and I might see you and I might not. I'm just adding a little detailing here. And I just stamped in different colors and now I'm just like, now I'm just going crazy. Now I'm just adding layers of color and it'll show up a little bit here and there. There's not much left on this stamp. So it's really only gonna show up in the more pale areas because I didn't ever re-ink. I just kept stamping, stamping. Okay, so there's that. Let's get our lines drawn in. I'm just kind of laying this out like, okay, I know, I don't actually know what I feel like making this titled, but I know a few things. So what do I know? What am I for sure on? And let's work on that. And the reason I do that is I like to see progress. When it comes to my scrapbooking, I do not enjoy sitting here and it is not fun for me to sit here and fuss over and question every little thing. As soon as I like something, I go with it. I commit to it and I go with it. And a part of that is over the years, I've created thousands, if not tens of thousands of scrapbook pages. So yeah, it's it could be 10,000. I mean, it really could. I've created a lot of scrapbook pages over the years. So I know enough about my own style and about my own process and my own tastes to know that if I know I like something and I'm looking at it and my brain says, you know, like green light, thumbs up, that's gonna work. Well, then I already know that's gonna work. And this is June, 2021. And I'm envisioning the title kind of going here. And then embellishments. So if I know it's good, if I'm like, yep, yep, I like that, that makes me happy, then I go ahead and move forward with it. I go ahead and run with it because I know I like it. I know it's gonna work well for me. I know that I'm good with it. I'm not gonna second question that or second guess myself. Now, if I do that and then as I'm sitting here go, oh, shoot, I've changed my mind. Well, the way my process is, if you guys haven't noticed, I leave myself pretty flexible here. We are not, I do not get myself in a corner. Um, I sort out my photos and then I sort out my papers and I work in a, in a way that I don't get the glue out until I have decided what I'm doing and I have a clear vision, which means that I really don't end up very often, oh, when I change my mind, I wanna do this a little differently. It's not very often that I end up with something that I cannot fix or cannot adjust and change to be a little different based on what, whatever, whatever it was that changed my mind, that changed my mood. It's not very often that I can't just adjust that and fix that. And as far as making yourself work with what's on hand and not just running out to the store, not just running out and saying, okay, well, you know, I really would rather have this other item or I don't know this, there's this new thing. But what I end up doing for myself is I just kind of look at what do I challenge myself? Well, what can you do with what you have here? What can you make work? And I will tell you that if you will do that more and shop a little more intentionally, what ends up happening in crafting all around, you end up getting more stuff used, but you also end up stretching your creativity because instead of always kind of looking and going, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do or oh, I can't decide, I need to go shop. Instead of having that be the mentality, when your mentality is I'm gonna look around and see what I've got and what I can make work, you're going to stretch your creativity because instead of just going with your first idea and going with the easiest thing, going and buying the perfect thing, if there even is one, if you're, the, if you're instead 
challenging yourself to work on hand, what ends up happening is you dig deeper, you look for the idea that you hadn't thought about, and then you end up with new things to put in your arsenal. You end up with brand new ideas and concepts and all kinds of cool stuff that had you not tried, you wouldn't have had that in your bank of possibilities, right? So you end up better off when you do that. Not that you shouldn't shop or not that you can't. It's just if you challenge yourself a little more, you really are going to be happy with that. And I have gone, oh, I don't know. I think nine months is the longest I've gone on a no spend. Um, so yeah, oh, I've done it. I have done it, but... It's, it's not something that, how do I phrase this? It's not something that necessarily, like it wasn't the no spend that got me creating. It was me wanting to create that got me creating because I have known people and I have seen where doing like a, doing too strict or something like that can actually, what, ends, what can end up happening is you just don't feel like creating anymore. Oh, I broke my letter sticker. That's okay. It'll work. You don't feel like creating or you just go do something completely different. You just shut the drawer, shut the craft drawer and go elsewhere and just forget about it. So you don't want that to happen. So I think, I think there's kind of a nice balance. And I also think that everybody's going to be a little different. Everybody's going to have a little different approach, a little different look. Um, these are new, but I've had them for, I don't know. I've had them for I think a couple months. I don't think these are, I think these are months old. Um, and I want to add, I'm going to add distillery in, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. I'll add distillery down here. Uh, I'm just deciding if I want to have the end or, okay. But anyhow, um, another thing that I'll do, I, I mentioned before that I like to just have a couple items that are my like, come on, may use this at a time. I don't like to overwhelm myself. That kind of goes into like projects. If I have 37 projects out here, odds are I'm just not going to do any of them and I'm going to go start a 38th project because my brain is going to be like, oh boy, yeah, I'm not... I'm not handling all of this. I'm just going to go over here and play over here and do this other stuff. Isn't that much more fun? And well, you know, maybe it is a little more fun, but also maybe I have um, regrets. And by the way, if you notice, I keep pausing because I keep looking at this picture to make sure I'm spelling it correctly while also talking to you while also while also spelling backwards. No shame in that Google game or however you're looking things up. No problem. Because let me tell you, I would far rather take a minute and look than have to go and correct something later. There we go. So we got our title. I used a new, this is a new product, but then again, sometimes using your stash is about let's do something with something that's new that we haven't yet touched. So I've got that. Now the only question marks are, do I want embellishments? And if you're, you know, gasping or shocked because you can't imagine your scrapbook without embellishments, well, let me tell you something. I can just write in my journaling here and this can be done. I don't have to, and I think this is very important, especially for a lot of scrapbookers. If you've been at this a long time, guys, there's no scrapbooking police. None of, nobody's making you do anything. You don't have to come in here with buttons or metal bits or whatever else and embellish. You can just be done. This does not have to go any further. If you've got your, you know, some kind of title, your picture, your story, you can be done. You don't even have to have a title. You can just have picture and story on a plain piece of paper and say, I'm done. There are not rules and regulations. There never have been, there never will be. You do whatever it is you want to do. Now that said, I think given like all the fun stuff, I want to get some metally things. So one second while I grab them. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, 
And this is another one for using our stash, for getting stuff used. I keep metal bits and pieces, just whatevers, all dumped together in a bin, um, sort of by color. I say sort of because I think this still is. This is mostly, well, not that. I don't know why that's in there. But this is Tim Holtz products in this one, which I kept separate um, mostly because... Mostly I kept it separate because there would be times when I would need to, when I used to do affiliate links or when I used to do other stuff, I actually needed to know like the brands. So it made sense because I have a lot of Tim Holtz products. Um, these days, honestly, I could separate that back out. I don't have to keep that separate anymore. That'll be up to me. But I was thinking how I have all these different like, aren't those cool? Some of these are very inexpensive from gosh I don't know where but I bought a bunch of things in bulk once upon a time some of these like I know that this one is like an old making memories if you've been scrapbooking a long long time an old making memories little doohickey some of these are from Prima Prima and their Finnebar line of embellishments has lots of fun stuff there's lots of sources going on here I'm really just going through looking for some good sizes and some kind of funky pieces here to add in. And then once I'm happy or once I feel like I once I feel like I have like I don't know a couple more than I probably need, then I'll start placing them. I just like to do all the digging and pull everybody out that maybe is going to be a part of this party and then put things back and there's random stuff too like i think this came in some like scrapbook kit and i'm like this is way too thick well who would ever put this on a scrapbook i don't know but it's in here this is a pin that i used to use when i was a teenager because it used to be a rule when you would show horses that you had to have a tie bolo tie or brooch at your throat and this is one that I used to use and I never got rid of it, but I also have no use for it. So it lives in here. And it's, I always think about that when I see it. It's always kind of fun. A little behind the scenes there. All right, so now we have to decide things like, the title is probably the big area where I would want embellishing. Why? Because the title is a focal point area. So we'll do some, and it's okay if I, move my glue around it's okay I just covered up the um staple that I put there doesn't matter that's fine guys there's no rule no rule that I can't just cover up cover up the staple or do something a little funky no regulations no rules we're just gonna do what we want so I'm gonna put that guy there and then I think I'll put somebody here I'm just kind of this now I'm just kind of going for it because now I'm into the idea <laughs> I'm into the idea so it's like okay let it flow just roll with it so this is going to make this a heavier chunkier page which means it's going to be more of a focal page versus a much lighter on the metals much lighter on the embellishments accent page or photo heavy page that's not taking up extra room in the scrapbook so I point that out because I don't, you can do it however you like. In the past, I have done scrapbooks where they're all like this and they're all kind of chunky and heavy. However, I find personally these days, I prefer it, I prefer to have a little lighter on the embellishments. Not overall, just that I prefer to have some pages that kind of don't have as much going on. And I was going to put these up here, but I feel like they're floating up in this corner. So I am going to plop these down here. Yeah, I'm going to plop these down here and then we'll call it good. So I'll need to add a couple of, well, I need to add my journaling and a couple other things, but I think I'm pretty happy overall here. I like the embellishing. And remember, I can set this aside. If I think, 
well, I don't think I want buttons or sequins or anything, but I don't know, or I don't think I want to add stitching, but what if I want to add stitching? Well, I can set this aside and come back and add hand stitching, machine stitching, whatever. At this point, I would say mostly hand because you don't want your machine near these metals. If I had wanted machine stitching, I should have done that in advance, right? So I will add that. And then on Facebook and Instagram next week, I will add this. And next week, I don't have my topic yet next week. Or if I do, I don't see, I don't remember what I said I was going to do. But next week, we are going to do some holiday theme. And if you're going May, it's still October. Well, next week is November. And guess what? Reality check, November and December fly past. They're they're two months, but they go past like one month. So we're going to do some holiday live next week. And then there's going to be every week in November, there'll be at least one live show where we do scrapbooking or there'll be a couple scrapbooking and a couple of other. You can find the schedule on YouTube. I haven't set it. If you're watching this live, if you're watching this on Friday, the 29th, I haven't set that schedule up yet, but I am setting it up by Monday and I'm hoping to stream to YouTube and Facebook simultaneously going forward. Fingers crossed that everything works and I'm able to do that. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, with the live shows next week, you will, and I'm going to announce it next week on next week's live show. There will be a prize that I will announce, and it's going to be I have a couple of leftover class kits. Whoever wins is just going to get all the leftover class kit goodies because we got to use our stash, but we also have to clear things out sometimes. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend or day, depending on when you are watching this. And I will see you next.